Welcome back to another video. Today, we're doing something that I really have not done before, and that is chase big Dakota perch. Now, uh, I was talking to my good buddy, Cody Roswick, and he said he was on a good perch bite. Cody kind of, he guides sort of around the Devil's Lake area, but you know, all throughout the state. And right now we're on a smaller lake. I think we're gonna get out on Devil's here um, in one of the upcoming days, but for now we're chasing perch. And uh, I just dropped down the Mega Live. You guys get some cool views with the Mega Live. And look at that, right as we, right as I put that down there, a big giant school of perches coming through. So we are, uh, I'm gonna walk you through some of the stuff that Cody likes to do out here. And uh, we'll talk to Cody in a little bit too, but for now, I'm just going to uh, get my bait down and see if I can catch some of those big giant jumbo perch. All right, so here's what we're gonna be running. Right now I have a green buckshot, kind of a perchy, perchy color right there with the green. And then I have just a tiny little minnow. Oops, I'm gonna try and not to drop them down the hole. And basically I'm just gonna hook this thing wherever. Uh, my understanding is that these perch are not gonna be too finicky, but I'm hoping that this is gonna be the only minnow that I end up using because uh, once I catch a perch, I'm gonna be using something a little bit different for bait. So let's drop down. See if we can get the first victim. And look how aggressive they are. Oop, missed them. There we go. All right. Not a big perch, but this is a. Uh, Still reasonable enough one for uh, what I'm about to show you. So here's a little trick that Cody Roswick told me. Out here in the Dakotas, you're allowed to use the eyes of perch to catch uh, more perch or walleyes or whatever you're chasing. And that's not legal in all states, but it's really simple. You just get your thumbnail underneath it and then you pop it off. And uh, I guess this means this little guy's gonna have to be part of our limit, unfortunately. And now I've got this really good, durable bait. And it's a little bit, might be a little bit gruesome for some of you, but that's just how they do it here in the Dakotas. So I'm gonna drop down and the perch just absolutely love it. So honestly, I would say it's like probably the best bait that you can have for perch. There we go. That's a little bit of a better one right there. Still not a giant, but we are gonna get into some pretty good sized fish here. Cody beat me out here because Cody's scouting around looking for places to uh, bring his gu uh, guide clients. And uh, so he beat me out here, but he showed me his bucket and there's this one's a lot bigger than this one in here. So we're just gonna keep jigging up. We still got that perch eye on here, which is uh, one of the benefits of using a perch eye besides the fact that the perch love it is the fact that they're really durable and you, you can really catch a lot of fish on them. like just another upgrade there this one that's just slightly bigger here awesome but it's really cool some of these lakes are just so fertile and uh, full of fish you know whether it's perch or walleye or anything like that that's what's cool about this whole area of North Dakota and you know some of these also some of these smaller lakes around devils and all that is the fact that there's like, these lakes are really fertile. Some of these big perch, you know, if I'm like fishing back in my home state of Minnesota, um, some of these perch that are bigger, if they're this size, like they could be a pretty darn old fish. But uh, like, like, like older than your dog, kind of old. <laughs> but 
here in the Dakotas, like these might just be a few years old. Some of these fish are really, really young and they're just really uh, fertile fisheries. All right. There we go. Those look like some better marks. So I kind of had to concentrate for a second there. Another good one. Check that out. Beautiful. And you can see how pale they are. That means that generally tends to mean you're fishing in dirtier water. The more vibrant colored perch are what you're usually going to find when you're fishing in uh, clear bodies of water. But that's what's cool. I mean, most of the bodies of water that I fish are very clear, just for the most part. And there are a million perch down there right now. And get right back down. Um, most of the bodies of water that I fish are just extremely clear so you have perch that are really vibrant in color they kind of look like peacock bass almost but uh, these ones are a lot more pale so it's cool to just see fish that look a little bit different than uh, what you're used to catching and there's like I can't even count how many fish there are down there right now just unbelievable oops I felt a little tick there there we go And here's a smaller one. One thing that's interesting that I'm already noticing so far, and Cody had kind of confirmed it, is the fact that oftentimes these fish are, like, they're not schooling by size, basically. Like, there's big ones, there's little ones, which can maybe be a dangerous proposition for some of those smaller ones, if there's some big ju jumbos swimming around. But there's just a variety of fish, and we're just gonna be working through some of these uh, smaller fish to get to some of the bigger ones, so. go man it's that's a pretty good one it's uh really pretty just impressive the pure mass of fish like if you look down there right now like look at all those fish god i mean there must be like three dozen just right underneath the hole there have been moments where there were no fish on the screen but then like an enormous school will just pass through and uh yeah this is just honestly silly like if you went out here and you were starting to you were asking questions and like hey you know do you guys like to hole hop or how does that work you know like some lakes you might have to hole hop to find perch uh this is not a hole hopping kind of bite <laughs> this is like a sit down in a nice warm fish house like we're in right now and uh just wait for the fish to come to you like holy cow like i'm gonna get right back down there Oh, those fish just took off for some reason. I don't know what the heck they're going after, but don't worry, there's still some that left behind <laughs> that are still hungry. <laughs> Ooh. That one has some bigger shoulders on it right there. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. golden golden perch these things almost look like a uh, like Brett McComas and the target walleye newsletter he's always sharing weird weird fish that are different colors and yeah golden pike and all these create all that craziness and uh, this guy is like well number one he's got a lot of energy but number two look at that beautiful golden perch that thing is almost that thing is just so much different than what I'm used to seeing as just far as far as like colors go. Look at this. Unbelievable. There's no fish on the screen. Could you believe that? Oh, I lied. Looks like they're coming in right on the right side. <laughs> yeah, they left me alone for two seconds just to catch my breath. I feel like uh, setting hooks, fighting fish, unhooking fish, talking to the camera. I think they decided that I finally needed a little bit of a break. <laughs> like, holy cow. There we go. Well, that took longer than I expected, but that's not a... That's still like a million times better than anything that uh, I've had to deal with in Minnesota. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm like 
just kind of like crazy and all over the place and excited, but I am just like truly excited. Like this is so unbelievably cool. Such a cool experience to see all those perch down there. And seeing them on, I mean, if I had a 2D sonar, I mean, it would just look like the whole screen or the whole, you know, bottom third of the screen would just be completely full. I would obviously have no problem with uh, with doing that and fishing with the 2D sonar in this situation, but this is just such a cool viewing experience. And I, I do think that it's better for the viewer, all of you guys watching it. Um, it's way more fascinating than looking at like 2D sonar that's just, oops, that's just uh, totally packed to the brim. Like you get to see the fish on the side, on the left, on the right, you get to see some of them come up. And uh, you can see, you can actually almost see the fish like turning around and circling on you, especially when you're uh, chasing like bigger fish, like walleyes and pike and stuff. It's really fascinating to see kind of just how those fish are moving and reacting to your bait. And like walleyes, for instance, are really just like roaming around and uh, you know, like they'll come in and do a drive by and then they'll circle back around. And you know, it might be like the third or fourth time or fifth time that they've circled around before they finally decide that they're ready to bite. But that's one of the cool things about the technology. I think, uh, I know some of you have been saying like, hey, you should just use a standard flasher. And like, I've definitely done that my whole entire life before this season. You know, I've dabbled with some live technology in the past uh, with some of my buddies that happen to have, have these uh, units, but this to me like is going to be more entertaining for uh for all of you viewers out there watching this so that's the main reason why i stick with it it's a, a little bit of a pain in the butt to uh lug around and like it's big and bulky and not super ideal if you're going to be doing uh hole hopping and whatnot but when you're setting up camp like it's totally ideal it's so cool and you know there's also some other scenarios where it can be really useful you know like when you're trying to well, that's a big one <laughs> when you're trying to find uh like basin crappies and stuff like that that is a really big perch <laughs> i don't even think i have any devices for measuring these um let's see i do have a bucket let's see how wide it is all right so this thing is a little bit wider than the top of the bucket which uh would mean that it's a little bit bigger than 12 inches because that's usually what the top of a bucket is so look at that beautiful fish whoops beauty gorgeous gorgeous and I, like i said like a million times already like i just love love those colors so this is like your typical dakota slough and it's pretty darn dirty water but it looks like there is some level of clarity so i'm going to uh drop the underwater camera down and see if we can actually see these perch make some strikes and uh, this is just one of my favorite things to do back home we fish a lot of clear water so like uh, seeing perch on the underwater camera is just like that's just how I like to fish them a lot of the times but right now I'm gonna drop this camera down and see if we can see them in this dirtier water so I'm gonna leave the mega live down just for a second so I can just get a gauge for like the depth that I have this camera at and to get it all lined up. And then I'm gonna pull the Mega Live out and I'm gonna try and see if I can line this up and jig in front of the camera. Oh, there's one right there. Look at that. Checking me out. Let's see if there's, oop, that's a bigger one right there. Well, maybe. That's cool. Not a giant. You can see like we're definitely in mud. Try not to kick that up, but sometimes dropping the camera down just to see what you're in is kind of cool. Look at that one. That one has some nice shoulders. That's a gorgeous fish. But yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to get this set up and see if we can jig in front of it. There was no shortage of perch before I ran back to the car and grabbed this uh, underwater camera. So I'm assuming, oh, there we go. Right on cue. How cool is that? Let's just dead stick it, see if they like it a little bit more like that. It's spinning a little bit, which I don't think is ideal. Look at them. Oh, missed it. Come on in, Cody. Okay. 
good. Cody just showed back up. He was packing down some gear. We're looking to call it. This was kind of a short little run, but uh, figured what the heck, it'd be fun to bust out the underwater camera and see if we can even see him. And yeah, so far we're able to see him a little bit. If you want to come Good. in here and say hi? Sure. This was just such a hot and heavy deal that Cody almost didn't <laughs> even get the chance to say hi. Yeah, we're uh, enjoying the fruits of North Dakota's labor here. Yeah, unbelievable with these fertile fertile fisheries like this to yeah. just so prolific and so many fish. There really is, there's, cool. a, there's a lot of fish and they grow really fast. There's lots of food. So these fish have fairly short lifespans and they definitely grow fast. I know the, the state made mention that some of these little walleye lakes are growing keeper size walleyes up to 16 inches in only two years. Really? That is unbelievable. And, that's, that, and they, they were, uh, there you got one coming right there. They were making there we go. note that not even they can believe that the fish are growing that fast. There we go. Pretty neat. How do you like that? So you got to see it on the Mega Live, and now you get to sneak a peek at it with the underwater camera. It's really cool. I mean, we were uh, we were sort of interested to see if we'd be able to see it. Uh, yeah, see yeah, it the, enough. But the water's got a pretty good stain on it, but your it camera's does. picking it up. Okay, you yeah. can definitely tell there's some stain in the water, but it's but yeah, you can definitely see them. And yeah, I have it. There's Ooh, some pretty oh good. Oh my word! Look at that. Ooh, that one looks yeah. good too. Look at he's all darty. That was super. <laughs> Look at all the ones behind him. Yeah, it just. Uh, it's hard to tell how big they are, too, because it all just depends on how close they are to the camera, but. It does, yeah. Yeah, that was. And you gotta sort through some small ones, but there's definitely some some nice jumbos in here, too. And that thing really was really darty, though. Yeah, this is really. I mean, now that, now that I've done this and like there's so many fish down there, it's like. You just do it. Look at there. Oh, yeah. they, they think I'm in the mud. Nope, I'm up here. That one yeah. knows though. Yeah. And perch are very competitive too. So the more fish, you know, if the more fish that are down there, the usually the more aggressive and the bigger ones dominate the school, obviously. So it's always good to have a little competition down there because sometimes you select a little better fish that way. It's interesting because I got this big giant buckshot. It's a quarter ounce buckshot, like straight up, just like a straight up Wally spoon. And uh, I've caught, I, I can't even keep track. Like if I had a clicker, that would be the only way. Yeah. They're just coming in way too fast. But I think this is just the second perch eye that I put on, which is just crazy to me. Like to not be, re to, when you're processing through so many fish like this. Yeah, that's the beauty of a perch eye is that they're really durable and they stay on the hook real well. You put yeah. two on and you can you can literally catch an entire limit of 20 perch on two perch eyes. That's so crazy. Yeah. And they just need a little flavor. That, that really seals the deal with perch. They they like to have a little meat on their, on their spoon. A little flavor down there goes a long way with perch and walleyes. Even more so with perch and walleyes versus bluegills and crappies. That's what I've always noticed. Yeah, that makes they sense. They definitely like a little scent. That makes sense. When I'm in Minnesota, I'm using more uh, like worms and stuff. But you guys don't even waste your time with worms. Actually, I do fish worms a lot. When the bite gets a little little tough, then a lot of times I'll I'll use little spikes or yep. a single wax worm. Um, and there's times when they prefer worms over everything else. And mm. there's there's other bodies of water in the state where there's a lot of fish, but they're they're really well fed. Yep. So you have to give them exactly what they want. Sure. So they're, you know, they're a little more fickle. And you will, you know, we're... Comes in fast. We're in some real uh, <laughs> There's prime some... waters right now where we're catching just oodles of fish. But um, they're, believe it or not, even there are days out here where it gets a little tough. I had a friend that was out the other day. I sent him to a little perch slough and he, he, he struggled that day and it was... It was uh, it was just a few days ago, and yeah, and it was because the weather was changing. There were some things going on, and the fish. He said if it caught half of what he marked, he would have hit. He oh, they were just done and super finicky. Yeah, they were just finicky, and are there, that happens. You are know, there every day's a little different. Yeah, are there times when you go to jigs, or is it just kind of like? Yeah, yeah, I use a lot of tungsten jigs, sixteenth uh, ounce spoons, and tungsten jigs. You know, some of my favorite spoons are. 
buckshots, um, the eyeball spoon, yep. and then the, uh, uh, what's a real popular Northland spoon? The forage minnow spoon? Forage minnow spoon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Those are, those are definitely my go-to. Sure. Yeah. Buckshot, yeah. eyeball, and the forage minnow spoon are definitely my go-to spoons. And the smaller, the better. The, I really like the forage minnow spoons because they make them down to what, uh, they for sure make a 16th, but do they make yeah, smaller than that? They make us one smaller than that too, or I have 32nd a 32nd or a 24 or yeah, something. Yeah, and that those really small spoon profiles are yeah. just dynamite perchers. Yeah, that makes sense. Baits, and so. actually this is oh sorry, I wasn't even looking. <laughs> That's uh interesting as uh because you know it's like a really small profile and one thing this is obviously like a, a perch catching video, but uh when you're chasing walleyes, if you're looking for something that's like a lot more finesse, that forage minnow can be kind of the ticket. I mean, you think of oh, a, yeah. you think of a buckshot as being somewhat finesse if you're fishing it slowly. It's got that Absolutely. slender profile, but yep. like if you want the ultimate finesse when you're fishing in like in like uh, February or like mid to late January, yeah, yeah so, some, something without rattles is, is yeah. a lot better, I think, in that thin profile. Um, yeah, it's like downsizing crankbaits. It's a, it's a lot of, it's real similar to that. That it seems as winter goes on, the the more I downsize. Sure. You know, right now you can get by. You just want to get down there fast, and you'll just catch them, oh catch her, catch them. <laughs> Look at this right here. Is that <laughs> not, nice I can't one. even yeah. get my stinking. Uh, catch that one, cause there. There you go. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know if that was the one that was on my lure. I think something grabbed it before I could even get my spoon in the probably in frame. But yeah, that's really cool views. But uh. Yeah, I think uh, whatever. It's like two o'clock right now. I think we're gonna wrap things up here pretty quick, and I might catch a couple more on camera. But I think we're gonna wrap this video right here. Thanks for Cody you for bet. sharing his knowledge and yeah and uh, yeah. Well, thanks for coming out and enjoying the perch lure with me. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I appreciate it. So this has been an interesting adventure. We're about halfway through, and this is kind of the first time I've. Man, if I could just unhook this fish, that would be great. <laughs> Here's a fish. Okay, thank you, sir. Yep. This has really been the first time that we've kind of really done any like real level of traveling. This one's gonna have to be kept, I think, just based on sure. the blood that's on my hand here. But uh, first time that we've done any level of traveling. And uh, yeah, this is a real treat. I have not done the slew perch deal before. This is a pretty special bite. So yeah, we're roughly halfway through the 30 day series. I want to thank all you who have been along for the whole entire journey and also the people who are hopping on right here there's you know a bunch more videos before this if you want to come check it out but uh yeah thank you for watching and we will see you tomorrow <laughs>